Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps to get my channel promoted, and I appreciate that. Um, I also love it if you leave a comment. Uh, I appreciate things like uh, constructive criticism, ideas for videos. I also love to hear how you do things, because not everybody does things the same way, so it's always interesting to hear. Um, Today I'm going to show uh, three different ways to set uh, pear-shaped stones, uh, specifically faceted pear-shaped stones. Um, they have kind of an unusual stone shape, so there's some different ways you can do it. One will be pretty basic, and then a couple will involve some prongs. Uh, so we'll give that a try and see how those work out. Before we get started, I wanted to thank some groups of people. Um, first off, my patrons over on Patreon are my core group of supporters, and I have a new one. I wanted to thank Lynette G for signing up, as well as uh, letting my other patrons know that I really appreciate their support. Not only the financial part, but also the fact that they've turned uh, my Patreon into this really cool jewelry community, and I love that they're uh, getting to know each other and sharing ideas and stuff. It's really a nice place. So. Thanks for that, you guys. Uh, the other group is my YouTube subscribers, and we just passed uh, 13,200, I believe. And that's amazing, and I love the fact that we're still growing, so uh, share it with your friends if uh, you like what you're seeing. Uh, but thank you for your support. I really appreciate the nice comments that people have been leaving. Uh, some people uh, leave some really moving things about how I've inspired them to uh, get back into it or take the plunge or whatever and I really I'm that makes me really happy because uh, that's kind of my purpose here so uh, thanks for that thanks also for the super thanks and the buy me a coffee those help a great deal with the rising cost of materials so I appreciate that with those things being said let's get started on these three uh, setting styles so this is one of my design idea books that you can get on my merch store. There's a number of different designs. Um, the newer ones have some interesting features, including this one has some uh, conversion tables on it, the uh, inches to decimal, uh, fractions of an inch, I should say, to decimal points, uh, to millimeters as well. So that's kind of handy to have around. Uh, there's another one that has American wire gauge to millimeters, because I know a lot of Europeans and people around the world watch my channel as well so hopefully those are useful to you I do try to mention what uh, sizes things are in millimeters as well if I, if I remember anyway um, the other thing I like about these is the grid pattern in the background it helps me to keep things sort of symmetrical um, so get yourself one of those I think they're really useful I found in recent times if I draw a picture uh, of what I'm gonna do beforehand and up with getting a little bit better result. So here's what we're using today. I have three different uh, marquee amethysts, uh, compliments of my friend Bobby, and uh, I wanted to show three different ways to set them. And they're all about the same size. They're um, I think what are they nine by thirteens or something like that? Pretty close to that. I think they're very pretty. I like amethyst in general, and. Uh, I think that'll make for a nice pendant. Actually, a nice three pendants. Um, so the different things we're going to do, I've numbered them in the order that I'm probably going to do them. I think I'm going to do this one first because it's kind of the most basic. It's just going to be um, a bezel setting with an interior lip for the stone to sit on and an external uh, piece of square wire to give it a little bit of uh, dimension. And then we'll just do a very simple kind of double jump ring bail on it. Uh, the second one, uh, it's going to be a prong setting, but uh, I've had several requests on how to do the type of prong setting that has kind of a little triangular cap uh, over the tip of the pear shape, and then we'll add some prongs on the bottom. And then finally, I'm going to do one I've never tried here before, and this is where I'm going to have a piece of flattened square wire, I think 12 gauge square. I'm going to cut a groove in it uh, with my Dremel and a, a I forget what they're called, maybe heart burrs, uh, to cut kind of a notch for the girdle of the stone to sit in there. And then we'll add a couple of prongs to kind of uh, keep it in place there. And it'll all be on a base. So, And these ones I've got some bales I made before the video so that I don't have to do that during the video since we're doing three projects. 
And if you're interested in seeing how to do those, uh, specifically this kind of bail, uh, I'll put a link up here. But there's also a number of different videos with different styles of bales you can check out too. So check out my um, findings playlist and I think you'll find them on there. So, All right, so let's get started on this one. First I need to make, I think, uh, a platform for this to sit on. And I want it to stick out just a skosh uh, here so I have room to mount these prongs as well as this kind of cap thing. And I think I'm going to use 12 gauge uh, square wire, which is 2.01 millimeters. And we'll do that first. So let me find some of that. Here's some 12 gauge square. And I need just a little bit more than twice as much, right? And then I can cut it down. So we'll cut it about. You can measure this if you want to get real precise, but for me, I'm going to kind of play it by your ear. So. All right, uh, to start with, I think I'm going to use my bail making pliers, or one of my bail making pliers, to kind of get this curve started. I want it to curve down here, and then we'll cross them over, and then we'll cut them so that they can be soldered together nicely to, at the tip. So, let's start by doing it this way, maybe. Best way to get one of these nice that I've ever found is to kind of overlap them like that. Even squeeze them past like that if you want to. Kind of take a look and see where we're at here. So I'm a little bit big right now still. Need to bring that a little bit tighter in. But we're kind of in the right shape range, I think. So I want it to be small enough to where uh, there's just a little bit of lip sticking out. sit in there right because I'm overlapped but you can get a basic idea of the size. I think we're kind of in the right size range now so I, I'm going to cut them off right where they cross here kind of in the middle of each one. Take my wire cutters just like this. So I cut it about halfway through. Same way on this one. And then let's spread this back open a little bit. I need to get these uh, filed so that they have an angle going this way so I can solder those together. And to start with, I'm going to spread them out a little bit further than that. This wire starts to get a little hard to bend, and if you need to, you can use two pairs of pliers like that. Let's start by filing the ends flat. I have a flat starting point. And then we're going to angle it like this. And you can use a miter vise jig if you want to. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. We have a big fire near us uh, in northern Colorado here right now. So if I'm a little hoarse, it's probably because the smoke in the air is pretty thick. We're lucky in that we have some air purifiers in our house that helps a little bit. So I want to push them past each other just a little bit. use a little bit of elbow grease to get this to kind of sit nice. 
that's looking a little kind of wider than it needs to be. So I may elongate this whole thing a bit. I can do that by just kind of like squeezing each side a little straighter and bringing these ends back together. That's not too bad. I think I'm pretty close on size and everything. So I'm just going to make sure that these guys are lined up uh, just a tiny bit better. And we'll solder that. And then I'm going to clean this up quite a bit so it's not perfectly flat and we can change that and then use the file to get it all nice looking. If you've never been to my channel before, I use uh, hard silver sheet solder primarily. We occasionally we use something else, but most of the time it's just this. And I use a liquid flux called Mighty Flux. And I dribble it on or spray it on depending upon my needs. My torch is a Smith, uh, Silversmith model, which used to be called the Handy Heat Torch. It's an acetylene air torch and it's great. It's a wonderful torch. I use a number one tip on it and that's mostly what people ask me about. <laughs> so feel free to ask other questions if I did not answer any of them. So one of the other things I do is pick soldering and if you're interested in seeing that I have a video. I'll put a link up there for you. It's one of those skills that I think is a game changer for, for silver cutting. Uh, it was for me anyway. Uh, I learned it years ago and it speeds things up and allows you to put precisely the amount of solder right where you want it. So you just need a soldering pick and a little practice. So we'll just flux this a little bit. Yeah, a little piece. Heat this up to the soldering temperature. Whereabouts. Make sure it flows completely. And we're done with that. Remember how it wasn't quite flat, so I'm going to take my bench block and I'm just going to use my. Uh, could use a plastic hammer, but it might not be as effective as this. Um, I'm not too worried about digging it up a little bit since I'm going to file it flat anyway. So this will. It out a little more effectively, probably. I can just do a little cleanup filing. Okay, I'm going to take. Uh, diamond burr and I'm just going to create a kind of a 45 degree angle or whatever angle it doesn't have to be 45 I guess whatever kind of matches the stone and I'm just going to grind uh, a taper on the inside of this hole here so that that stone sits down in there just a little bit it doesn't have to sit super deep but that'll be my next step so I'll be right back okay so hopefully you can see a kind of uh, created a, a taper going inwards like that and I played with the angles and stuff until the stone set in there nicely Not like that and sat straight and everything or pretty close to straight um, and then I cleaned it up with a, a, a little felt polishing wheel to because it's going to be kind of a hard place to polish so I pre-polished it and um, what we're going to do for this one is I need to create that little cup there and I did one as a prototype in advance, uh, and I think I'm going to use this one actually. But what I did was I took a piece of, uh, it was about 5 millimeters wide, and it's 22 gauge sheet, which is uh, 0.66 millimeters thick. And I scribed a line down it, and I probably, I don't know, it's a little more than. Uh, 45 degrees, I think, but I cut an angle like that because I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Dremel and cut a notch using a, 
one of those knife edge kind of burrs and create kind of a, a little trench there. Then we'll be able to fold it inwards and bend these downwards and then solder them, which is what I did here. So, and then we'll use this one. But uh, before I did that, I probably would well, find my tools that I can't seem to ever put my hands on. So I would take my file and get these all nice and symmetrical and neatened up. So and then once you had the, the notch here, you could just file it in, I suppose, if you're good at keeping things lined up. Once you had it uh, notched pretty well, then you can bend it into a you know, 90 degree angle like that. And then you're just going to bend each of these down. Like that. You know, and then solder that closed and clean it up with the file. And then you'll have one of these. So the next thing that I need to do now that I have this one made already is I need to decide how tall it needs to be because what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the tip of this stone in it and then I'll use the prongs that I'm going to add on the back here to kind of hold it in place and so it needs to be in there securely but I want it to be the stone to lie pretty flat. So I'm going to try and hold it kind of flat like this to get an idea how high that's going to sit. So you can see I made a mark already because I was playing with the height. And I think that's about where it needs to go. So I'm going to use my saw and cut it off right there. And then what we're going to do is solder that right on top of the tip of that so we have this little uh, nest for the tip of the stone. So I'll be right back. So I cut it off and I filed it a little bit and then I dribbled a little flux on there and then plopped it on there. Uh, and there's likely enough solder in the solder joint from soldering the two ends of the wire together to solder this down, but I'm going to have some handy just in case. So I think I have it positioned pretty well, hopefully. Alright, so if I just heat this bottom piece, the other piece is much smaller. It'll get hot just by being close to it bigger piece though has got the solder on it. And then once I get, got the bottom piece pretty hot then I can start hitting the side piece as well. So I'm going to cool it off and take a peek at it. See if we got it pretty square. I might have to file it just to scotch. I think it should move forward a little bit though in order for the stone to really sit nice. So I'm going to push it just a bit. <laughs> this is where Chad screws things up and he's got it almost right and decides to fix it anyway. <laughs> but I want it to look good too. One of the good things about silver is you can reflow the solder on it pretty easily and nudge things around if you don't have them quite where you want them to be. So with a little practice you can get to do that. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I need to find a way to put some prongs here. So, I need to make a little bit of uh, 16 gauge round wire, so I'll do that and I'll be right back. So I prepped a couple of things. Um, I made a little jump ring out of 18 gauge round wire and I cut a, a slice out of it, kind of a pie piece, so I could butt it up to the top of that base. 
and I cut two pieces of the 16 gauge round wire and I filed one at an angle like this so I could solder it kind of in a, in a Y shape there. One thing you can do if you ever have round wire that's kind of rolling around on you uh, and you filed an angle on it and you're trying to butt it up against somewhere and having trouble, if you bend it a little bit so that it can't roll, then you can get that angle to butt up against that nice. So, there's the skosh. So I'm going to solder that, I'm going to solder that on, and then I'm going to show you how to put the prongs on here. <laughs> They're trying to jump around on me. <laughs> okay, let's solder these two together as well. about right. So I need to get these to mount right there. This is 16 gauge. It doesn't quite fit in these holes. So I'm going to file the end of this a narrower. That's about the right distance apart. Hopefully that'll be pretty good, and I'm just going to solder it there and there. Hopefully, and use the point of that other side to kind of hold it in place. This one I was going to put this kind of bail on. So I already uh, put a link to this video. So. Okay, I'm just going to pick solder that little bit there and then cut those off. The reason I can do this with that elevated like that is the bail I'm soldering on here is a separate piece. And so normally with silver, you got to heat the entire piece to get things to flow. But, I don't want anything else to flow, so I just want this one separate piece to flow, so I'm just going to heat that. Keep the heat kind of concentrated over there. Get that to flow, but don't worry about accidentally reflowing in any other stuff. So. Alright, so we'll let that pickle, and then I'll cut those off and polish it, and we'll set it. So now we can get uh, <laughs> started on number two, which was supposed to be number one. So, all right. So let's. Uh, like I said, this is three sixteen inch or four point seven six millimeters, I think, uh, tall. But it'll definitely be filed down shorter a little bit. Doing a, a bezel for a pro or for a uh, pear shape or a marquee, something that has sharp corners like this, you never want to end your. Uh, you don't want to solder it right at the tip, and so to start with, I'm going to make kind of a sharp, sharp bend there, and we'll use that as the point. If you try and solder it there, it makes it really hard to set the stone. So, trust me on this. Okay, so now I'm going to make a little mark where they come together, just slightly beyond where they come together. I'm going to 
thanks uh, all of the people who have bought my ebook. I appreciate that. It really helps to keep keep uh, be able to do this when people do stuff like that. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's my guide to all of the 2023 uh, tutorials I had on YouTube. It includes a page for each of them, which has uh, my original sketch, a final picture of it, a list of materials you need, uh, difficulty rating, sort of subjective on my part, and um, some notes that I made about each of the projects, you know, whether it was had challenging spots or whether it uh, I might have done things differently if I did it again, because sometimes I'm figuring things out as I go here. Um, and then a link right to the tutorial. So if you're interested in buying that, uh, I'll put a link right there for you. Right there for you. Right there for you. thing about pear shapes and marquee stones, it's pretty easy to chip the tips off of those. So you got to be careful when you're shaping in when you're setting. So, see how I am size wise. I got pretty good on that one actually. So It's nice and smooth and symmetrical. And then I need to cut a piece of 14 gauge square I'm going to use for the platform for the stone in there. Uh, I have some flattened 12 gauge. That might make a nice lip around the inside of that. Let me try that. That'll raise it just slightly higher. So you don't have much of the pavilion sticking out. right on top of those pieces of solder. Let's heat the outside.
I was considering on this one tapering it down like this to give a kind of a slope on this piece. So I may do that. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so you can probably see this. I kind of filed it down at an angle all the way around. I'll try and neaten that up with the Dremel probably, but I like the way that looks. That gives it kind of a finished look. And now I'm gonna, um, where did I put the, oh, here it is. I'm gonna jump, uh, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna solder a jump ring up there, and then I'm gonna solder these two rings through it. that one pickle and we'll get started on the next one. <laughs> so this ended up being number one. <laughs> this one ended up being number two. And this will be number three. So we're doing kind of the opposite of this one on, on the third one. We're going to have a, a, a piece of curved flattened square wire with a notch cut into it for the girdle of the stone. And because of time, I pre-made that, as well as the base of this. I know a three project video is a long video, so. So this is gonna get soldered on there in order to be the backside for the girdle. To notch into. So. And right now you probably can't see it, but I will try and show you anyway. <laughs> this was a uh, 12 gauge square wire that was flattened. And hopefully you can see that, but there is a notch cut in here. See it at various different um, for the girdle to rest in. So we'll mount that on the back of this after we um, kind of taper this inwards a little bit on the on the platform on this one, and then we'll mount some prongs on the front of this one to hold it in place. But the back side will be lodged in that notch there. So we'll have to play a little bit with the height of this. And this is also 12 gauge square, just like the previous one. So we'll get that filed up a little bit. And I'll do that tapering thing. I, I meant to show you earlier. The little diamond burrs that I used to do this, just grind it kind of at an angle to match your, your pavilion's angle like that. And these work pretty efficiently. And on the point here, you can kind of lay it, lay it in like that. And it kind of makes a nice place for the stone to sit in there. So so we'll probably put that on there, make sure the stone seats in there nicely, and then we'll figure out where to put the two prongs up here and we'll do kind of what we did on that first one. So and then we'll add a bale to it. So I'm going to uh, taper this inwards and file it and I'll be right back. So I got that uh, situated and I'm going to go ahead and solder that on there. I've uh, tapered it just a little bit on the inside edge there. See how this works.
interesting thing about this one is that there's already some solder on the, on the piece here, so theoretically I wouldn't even need to add any. However, usually just to be safe, pleased with how that worked. That worked pretty well. And I made a slightly different bail for this one. It's kind of a piece of uh, half round wire that I tapered at either end. These end up looking pretty nice usually. guy pickle and then we'll uh, do some stone setting. Okay, so have all three done except for setting the stones on the two prongs. Um, I went ahead and set the bezel set one just because it's a standard bezel setting. So we'll just set that one to the side. Uh, we have this one with the cap on the, on the top up here. And I slid it in there and I bent them over just a little bit. I did uh, notch them just a little bit right where the girdle meets. And so we're just going to push those down. And then uh, I'm going to cut them off quite a bit shorter so they don't bump into each other. Like that. And we're just going to gently using the side of my chain those pliers here. Kind of like gently push them down. Cut off right about midway down the girdle facets. Last thing I'll do, uh, and I'll do this after I set the other one, um, but I won't make you watch, is I'm just going to take a silicone abrasive white wheel and shape this into a point very carefully so I don't hit the stone on each of these. And then I'll use a, a blue fine polishing silicone wheel and smooth them out until they're nice and shiny. And then I'll get some better pictures. But, uh, so that one was uh, the prongs around the bottom here. This one is just the opposite. Prongs are on the top, but it's got something on the bottom to keep it in place. So I'm going to slide this in there. Um, I have this little brass rod I use sometimes to poke from the bottom so I don't scratch anything or break anything. I wanted to pop it upwards so that that uh, girdle sat right into that uh, notch that's on the inside of that. Push it down pretty tight. And we're relying on it staying in there tightly uh, in that these these prongs will be pushed over pushing it that way so let's start these inwards a little bit and I'm going to cut these significantly shorter just like I did before down. Now you can shape the tops of your prongs however you want. Uh, I'm going to do them to points on this one, but I have occasionally rounded the tops just to make them look like little kind of balls. Or you could just kind of make them flat and then taper down. Whatever, whatever you like. So, so I'll get those finished up and then we'll uh, Get a. There's this one. There's that one. And here's the 
use this one. So three different ways to set, uh, you know, uh, pear-shaped stones. So probably this would be the easiest. I think these two are about equally uh, the same difficulty, but just a little more challenging than that. In that you have to create something for part of the girdle to kind of stick into there or on the other side. So, but uh, probably call this one intermediate, these two advanced. <laughs> I'll put it in both lists. So, all right, I'll get some better pictures and put them at the end. All right, well, that was the three faceted stone pear shape settings. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. And um, take a moment and check out some of my other videos. I have over 350 on my channel now, so there's almost certainly something else you'll find that's interesting. Um, there's even a playlist page which has lots of great playlists, so you might want to check that out. It's an easy way to navigate the channel. Um, after you do that, uh, if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, finally, uh, hit the video description down below if you are interested in checking out some of the relevant links. Uh, one, the uh, ebook that I talked about earlier, you can, uh, there's a link to that down there. Uh, there's a link to my merch store if you'd like to get yourself one of those nice design idea books that I have. Um, and uh, a number of other links, including my uh, Patreon or the Buy Me a Coffee link or uh, Pepe Tools, as I'm an affiliate to Pepe Tools. So check those things out as well. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care. Happy silversmithing.